Hi, welcome to this video where we're going to prove ln2 is irrational. We're going to start off by proving that if e to the k is irrational, then ln2 is irrational, where k is in the integers. The next step, we're going to prove that e to the k is irrational. So we're going to do this like all contradiction irrational proofs. We're going to assume that e to the k is rational, where k is an integer. And then we're going to define this function. This is called Niven's polynomial. We're going to define this function called f of x. Now, f of x has some nice properties. Firstly, at x equals 0 and x equals 1, we get that f and all of its derivatives are integers. This is really important because then when we define f of x, uh, capital f of x, as this, this is also an integer for f of 0 and f of 1. We're then going to create a differential equation in f of x. We're going to solve the x endpoints x equals 0 and x equals 1. And then we're going to multiply both sides by a clever constant to this differential equation. And we're going to find that as n goes to infinity, one side will go to 0. And the other side is going to be an integer. That means we can select n to be a large number. And the other side is going to be between 0 and 1. The other side is going to be an integer. And we're going to get a contradiction. That's the main idea of this whole proof. So let's start off by proving the first statement. So prove if e to the k is irrational and ln2 is irrational. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume ln2 is rational. So it's going to be equal to p of a q, where p and q are in integers, and their GCD is 1. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by q. So we get q ln 2 equals p. And using a logarithm rule, this is ln of 2 to the q equals p. And getting rid of the logarithms, we get 2 to the q equals e to the p. Now, this side here, clearly an integer. Whereas, according to our assumption, this is irrational. So we get a contradiction. So ln2 is irrational. So what we're first going to do, we're going to make our assumptions. So let e to the k equal p of the q, where p and q are integers, and their greatest common divisor is 1. Next, we're going to define our function. So we're going to let f of x be equal to xcn times 1 minus xtn over n factorial. Now, what you'll notice is f of 0 and f of 1 clearly equal 0. And if we take the j derivative and evaluate it at 0 and 1, it's also going to be zero. The reason being, the only way we can cancel this x factor, or this 1 minus x factor, is if I differentiate n times. So as long as j is less than n, we're not going to cancel this part. Now what happens when j is bigger than or equal to n? Well, in that case, say we differentiate the 1 minus x part n times, then that's going to cancel the n factorial. And likewise, if we were to do it with this one, it's going to cancel the n factorial. So as long as, as, long as that's disappearing, we've still got an integer. Okay, it's not going to be equal to 0, but it's still going to be integer. So to begin with, we get that f of x... And all its derivatives must be integers at x equals 0 and 1, which is really important because that means when we define capital F of x to be k to the 2n f minus k to the 2n minus 1 
f prime plus k to the two n minus two f prime prime dot 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 plus f to the two n. We get that f of zero and f of one are integers. So we have f of zero and f of one are integers. Because remember k is an integer. We were assuming that at the top at the top here. Okay, next. We want to try form a differential equation. So let's differentiate our f of x. So f prime of x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do diagonal differentiation. So when I differentiate it, I'm going to put it here, 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 and here for each term. So let's see what we get. So we get this is equal to plus k to the 2n f prime minus k to the 2n minus 1 f prime prime plus k to the 2n minus 2 f prime 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 dot 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 plus f to the 2n plus, plus 1. Now what's really important to see here, this n term is 0. f of x is a polynomial of degree 2n. If you were to expand this, the biggest term would be the t x to the 2n term. Now, why is that really important? Because if I differentiate a polynomial of degree 2n, 2n plus 1 times, it's going to be 0. So this term here is 0. Now let's times f of x by k. So k f of x. Well, this is going to be equal to k to the 2n plus 1 minus k to the 2n f prime plus k to the 2n minus 1 f prime prime dot 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 plus k f to the 2n. Now when we add f prime of x to k f of x, well all that we're going to be left with, and I've forgotten an f here, is k to the 2n plus 1 f because we get this mutual cancellation between sort of the vertical terms. And that's going to go all the way on along till this term here. Okay, this really, I should put this behind the dots. Um, there's going to be a sort of a dot here that this one's going to cancel with, and this one's going to cancel with one just inside the dots there. Um, but they're all going to cancel out. And all we're going to be left with is this first term. So we get this differential equation. Now, using an integrating factor, we know that e to the kx is going to be our integrating factor. So we can multiply both sides by e to the kx and integrate. So we're going to have the derivative of e to the kx f of x is equal to e to the kx times k to 2n plus 1 f. And now I'm going to put this as f of x. So just abbreviating it as f. And then we can integrate both sides between 0 and 1. So we get e to the kx f of x between 0 and 1 is equal to the integral between 0 and 1 of e to the kx times k to 2n plus 1 f of x dx. We're almost there at this point. Now, on the left, we're going to have e to the k f of 1 minus e to the 0, which is going to be 1 minus f of 0. And well, that's going to be potentially almost an integer. So let's write all the left side out, and we're very close to this contradiction. So remember, e to the k was equal to p over q. So I'm going to multiply both sides by q. This is going to give me p f of 1 minus q f of 0 equals q times the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the kx, k to the 2n plus 1 f of x dx. Now, a little observation that we can find for f of x, if we go back up to the top here, 
f of x is defined as this. Now x is on the bound 0 to 1. The biggest f of x can be, and in fact this is a kind of a much bigger upper bound, but the biggest the top can be is 1. It never actually achieves 1, but the biggest the top can be is 1. So we're going to say f of x is less than 1 over n factorial. And well, clearly for x between 0 and 1, it's going to be positive. So we get this bound. Which means if we go back down to this integral now on the right, this integral here is between 0 and then it's between when we put in n factorial. So q times k to 2n plus 1 over n factorial times the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the kx dx. Now, as n goes to infinity, this is going to go to 0. So as n goes to infinity, this here goes to 0. So for large n, the right hand side, which I'm going to label in blue, is between 0 and 1. But now the left hand side, which I'm going to label in yellow, the left hand side is in the integers, it's an integer.